Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. I'm here tonight with uh, two Caribbeans that I didn't plan to have here tonight. Um, but we're here, though. Yes, you yes, are. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, JB and the Film God, you already know. And Negro, the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like his name is not going to be in the, the description. Probably not. <laughs> oh, I'm probably oh. going to put El Negro. So, so why we had to say our names then? If you our don't have to say your actual name. I'll probably put just El Negro. My real, my real yeah, um, nickname. It's, that's fine. <laughs> right. People don't use their real names nowadays. I want my name to be Light Skin Records then. Of course. Why not? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's a really cool oh. name. You know? Yeah. You speak Spanish? No, my part is fast. Oh, you speak French. Okay. I don't speak that one. Um, Smoke ganja, you see, you don't know. Rasta for life. Speak Spanish. <laughs> Rasta for life, man. And y'all wonder why I don't like Jamaicans. Anyways, <laughs> speaking of Jamaicans, um, Idris Elba's directorial debut <clears throat> released on January 20th, 20th um, at the Indie Film Festival um, titled Yardy after the book from Victor Hadley in 1992. Um, the movie is basically just like the same thing as the book is just live action version of it um he hired some jamaican actors some of whom it was very interesting watching the interview they they actually have like real accents it wasn't like watered down <laughs> or anything like that like they they're jamaican um the concept of the movie is just that it's not supposed to be like you know the typical gunman bad boy something that you see most times when you're watching like movies about jamaica themed and around jamaica um it was they filmed it i think all last year between we got, we got other movies that's not gunman stuff like what love is rock uh, <laughs> who knows these movies love. though who knows these uh, movies though Jamaicans know these movies, but what it's talking mean? about to portray to other people who aren't from Jamaica who don't know the depth of the culture, and that's literally like all they see. Well, how are they gonna know if we keep uh, saying stuff like what you just said? Not the typical Jamaican movie. That's the, his guns. words. I'm oh, using got, his words. We got um, Dance All Queen. <laughs> not just Dance All Queen. That was a joke. Stella, how Stella got her groove. Don't back. be rude. That okay. Okay. She fell in love with a Jamaican. Okay. <laughs> a lot of Jamaican plays with Shibada. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you know. That's plays though. I'm talking about movies I that know, go know, nationwide, know, know, not I nationwide, know. international. However, on the topic of how Stella got her groove back, this is one of the reasons why he got actual Jamaican know, actors so they didn't have those watered down accents. Accent. Oh, yeah, I remember them Jesus accents. I, dr I dreamt about it. That nightmares. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I was like, where this dude from? It's not America. Bahamas. America. I don't know what accent that was. But they apparently, you know, because most of us talk fast, so they had to slow it down. So people that aren't Jamaican or who aren't, you know, well-versed in the dialect would understand it better because he also didn't want to use subtitles. Um, he was saying something about wanting the film to feel natural that so that actual Jamaicans would want to watch the movie and not feel, you know, like... It's a farce, basically. Like, this is just people pretending. Like, he wanted it to be something that was natural and authentic and, like, felt real. So, I mean, I'm interested. Um, the interviews were pretty interesting. Um, the people that he casted, I have no idea who any of them are. <laughs> but, you know, one of them was saying that they want... Of course, that they want people to come to Jamaica and film more movies and use more Jamaican actors for their movies and... All of that, that, but that's bringing more money into the. Um, yeah. Well, they gotta the they gotta stop taxing the the filmmakers <laughs> that was born in Jamaica, <laughs> yeah, and let them come in there I really and think. do the work, real. Because y'all really. not charging the 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 people them from the UK or the United I really States, think. but you charge the little yadi you that's coming through with his cameras <laughs> and his lights. Sir, okay. give me two thousand dollar now. <laughs> two thousand dollar. Someone fixed. Okay. So, Personal experience? 
<laughs> Sound like that touched you a little bit. <laughs> Soon as you land at the airport. Listen, I know because I've traveled with my cameras look, and lenses. First of all, they look up your camera to see how much it costs. <laughs> they didn't do all that for me. Wah. They look it up to see how much it costs to, dep- to see how much they're going to yeah. charge you. You don't know a real hustle until it touched down your yard for real. <laughs> Scam at them there, yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> that's basically um the whole idea of it. They just wanted it to be real. Um it I saw a few critics from the um film festival who basically were saying that 40% of the movie is unintelligible because they couldn't understand the Jamaican accents mm-hmm. and how they felt like it was um it was just typical, but you know, critics, whatever, they have, it's, but my thing is like, it's negative publicity, but it's some kind of publicity, so. But who's whatever criticizing works. it? That's the thing. White people. Okay, then. So, I don't care. <laughs> exactly. If you're and not of like, the same you as me, I don't care. <laughs> the same what? You. You name the H? You. <laughs> you, you, you. It's between you and complexions. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it's right because I feel like you know they're another breed of ignorance. Where if it doesn't sound like plain English to them, they completely block it yeah. out and can't quote unquote understand it. So you, you know, next thing too, it's all about like a strategy. Like as um, I talk to a lot of politicians that own Air Jamaica. You know, I know a few. Important Jamaican people. Everybody important, you know, but we know some important Jamaican people. You know, the real one I sell the plane for Trinidad when the feds was onto them and then they buy it back. But anyway, yeah. Jamaica is making a lot of money. And a lot of foreign Jamaicans have Jamaican American kids that actually financially they are stable. Mm-hmm. So they refuse for all these people to go back to Jamaica to build their island. So they increase the media and the crime rate to um, strike fear in us Mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't go back to where we come from in order to keep the money in the foreign country. So we're talking at a politics level right now where they want to go down there and buy up what are the land and tell the rest of the Jamaican them, your people are there 24-7, but they down there buying the land. Of course. By the time you blink, no more left for you (laughs) because guess what? You think say gunman live next door. No gunman not next door. The farmer. (laughs) <laughs> I live there. And first of all, they're locking up all the, the all the gun on them and all the, the drug dealers that started building their houses, them big houses. Yeah. As soon as they lock them up, they selling the houses to somebody else for cheaper. Yeah, but they're not selling it for the Jamaican that just no, retire no, in New York not. City that's coming back <laughs> home with his family. They no. sell it for the people in England. No, of course you not. You know, and that's yeah. a bad move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's politics. Yep. Uh, oh, good to go. I sound like you know, sound like just now. I didn't... <laughs> Are we ready for the nah, revolution? Nah, nah, nah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so um, jumping from that, the Grammys was on Sunday, and for the third time, I don't know if this is third nomination or not, but it's his third time winning Damien Junior Gong Marley um album. Was it best reggae album? Um. A lot of people apparently wanted Chronix to win that department, but, I mean, it's a Marley, so it's kind of like <laughs> you can't really... I mean, I wouldn't even say just because he's a Marley because that was a good album. I actually listened yeah, to it. Yeah, it was actually a great yeah. album. So I'm, I'm here for that. Um, Shaggy and Sting performed. Nobody even knew that they were working together. <laughs> um, that song you, uh, you played earlier was pretty good, too. That was a pretty good song. Yeah, they released the song the day before the Grammy um, actually was taped. That was a pretty good song. So, yeah. yeah, they did that. They performed, was it Englishman in New York by Sting? And, of course, Shaggy had yes. to come in on the end and say, I'm a Jamaican in New York. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want uh, to sound like a hater, mm-hmm. but it is what it is. I don't know what it is about Chronix. I just can't <laughs> get into him. I just can't yeah. get into it. I can't. I don't know. I don't feel it. And then when they started comparing him to Bob Marley, I was like, Ooh. okay, all right, that's it. You all know right. what? I was like, oh, all right, I'm done. You know, you, <laughs> you, you know who do that? I was like, right, that's it. I'd rasta them oh, that yeah. refuse to elevate to another level and think say they are big drum and make it to Zion. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> things don't work like that. Uh, what are you uh, with the with the blood money tune? Blood money run the nation. The light skin Rasta youth from Jamaica. He and Chronics have the tune. Protege. Um, oh, oh, protege. Oh, protege, protege. That I is my like artist. I like, I like that him guy. More. I like him. Yeah, more. he's more. But oh, you see what? I choose. You don't understand. You know, some black people racist too. 
So through the Rasta light skin, you don't feel like he represent Rasta for right the right <laughs> oh way on an international goodness. base. So that's what they get. Fireball the whole of them. <laughs> Bob Marley we say. Is it? It must have been like the only one. And, right. and Damian light skin. Yeah. That about no. Hold on. The black yeah, man he attack. Got a, he got a white girl. <laughs> I the man them, they rasp them out of control. Left the, the man girl. alone. Uh -huh. Straight. Hey, listen, I, I thought I was the only one that it wasn't You're feeling chronic. A lot of people don't like chronics. Um, I don't know what the reason is. I don't is. know what it is. I'm being real. I just can't, I don't know. I can't get into the music. It just, it don't hold me. It don't. Do you like Protégé? Protégé, yeah. I don't know for some reason. He's a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Because y'all like, light skin. Protégé <laughs> is great. You yeah. believe him when he says something. I think that's what it is. It's like, I don't me? believe you. Like when Sizzler, yeah. when I used to listen to Sizzler, I believe Sizzler. All right, let me use a better example. You remember when Mungo was coming up? Uh, and then Cartel oh, no. was coming up? When, when um, Alliance days. I, oh, my Remember goodness. them days? Yeah, Mungo and a rebel. Mungo! <laughs> I couldn't listen to Mungo because I couldn't, I didn't believe him. He was the auto-tune man. He was unbelievable to me. <laughs> so everything, Mungo and a rebel, Representing for the ladies. And then you're busy. Come on, step out. You're like, hold on. That's what may I talk about. Right. right here. Step out on them, my youth. Why ain't Panetta on That's what I'm saying. But, all right, sorry, sorry. Sorry to take over your show, Pinus. Go on, go on, Pinus. Take over. Oh, my goodness. I just say, I don't know. Shout out to Mungo. Chronic, though, but, yeah, uh, but Chronics, big up yourself same way. But me just I make you know, say, you know, yeah, blood money run the nation. Okay. Wow. <laughs> You asked for a, a, a Caribbean show. Okay, we're giving you one. I guess, child. Um, okay, can we talk about Shaggy and Stig now? Yeah, you yeah, Shaggy the, and The chronic yes, something yes. touch you deep. Yeah, I'm trying to let it go. <laughs> he said, no, that topic passed. He passed me like, go back. I was, you know, I was trying to let it go, but I was like, I just got to be real. I'm not really <laughs> feeling it like that. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, um... The album is funny enough. It's set to be released on April twentieth, four twenty. Um, the ganja smoke at the feet. <laughs> apparently, um, they people are asking, you know, what's the album like, or what it's a lot of reggae infusion type music. You know, just happy sunshine stuff. Um, you know, just feel good stuff it's nothing really heavy apparently um they've titled the album 44 slash 876 which is a country code for england and jamaica mm -hmm. okay so oh, that's dope that's dope yeah so that's wow. that and that's cool. they've apparently recorded a full-length album already so mm -hmm. uh well i mean for april i guess it's, it's good right timing here. yeah um they were asking, <laughs> it was funny to me because they kept asking, like, everyone that saw them, like, interviewed them on the red carpet were like, oh, how did this come? How, how did you guys end up together? You know, whatever, whatever. And this is one thing, like, I love when I can talk to, like, Jamaican men or people or any guy in general and they're confident enough within their sexuality that you can make a gay joke and they don't fly off the hinge about it. So they're I'm asking, you know. Joke. Well, I'll get to it. Okay. So they're <laughs> just like any, not nothing intense or anything, you know, just like surface stuff. Yeah, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> they were asking, you know, how did you guys end up together? Like, how did this happen? Who approached who? And they made a joke and it was like, oh, we met on Tinder. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Apparently, I'm the only one in the room that does. But <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And, you know, they kept okay. saying they call us the not-so-odd couple and, like, all these other things. And I thought it was cute that they hugged at the end of their performance. And it was just a lot of things. I was just like, you know, big up Shaggy because go adult. <laughs> like Yeah, because Shaggy is setting the trend where you're making them know, say, um, the old school ways is over. You know what I'm saying? You can't be close-minded and be homophobic. You know what I'm saying? And he's setting the right example internationally, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's oddly enough, that's funny because we were just uh, listening to Shaggy's son in the car. Yeah. And I like <laughs> Shaggy. Banks. Remember? Yeah, Shaggy just had a video. Just now coming up, we were listening to uh, Shaggy's son. Because Shaggy was the first dancer artist to drop a music video with two gay women as the main models. <laughs> real For real? You feel me? That was like two years ago. And I applaud him for that. I'm like, damn, nigga, you beat me to it. Damn, damn, damn. You know, but Shaggy, that means he's a boss. He's making right. boss moves. All right, all right. 
Yeah, so there was that. They um, spoke on the reason why they were wearing white roses. Um, apparently, you know, they said that because they're married to two strong women and they have about six daughters between the two of them. And it's just the whole solidarity and healing and everything for the whole Me Too movement. Um, a lot of people at the Grammys were wearing the um, white roses in representation of that. And I was just like... <laughs> It is so sad, but at the same time, it's like, it's necessary because people still have this backwards mindset. You know, rape culture is still a thing because you still can't make quote unquote certain jokes that really aren't jokes. <laughs> and um, I've been hearing some stories like, you know, following the hashtag and stuff. And I'm seeing stories that like some people are just like, wait, what? And it's like, you know, I have a friend who said something like to the extent that as a woman, she was sexually assaulted by another woman. So you see all these women saying, I don't feel safe in the company of men and da da da. It's like, how do you, like, not turn it around? You as a woman, how do you, you're not comfortable in the company of women also? So, you know, it's. Is this, is this a gender thing or is it a security? Is it a, is it a gender thing or is it a security thing? Or, and, and being aware that you're making someone else uncomfortable. Right, because look what you just said. Like somebody else just came on and said, "Well, I was sexually assaulted by a woman." Mm -hmm. You know, so <clears throat> is it a gender thing or is it security? And and I don't know. It's security as far as what? Or, or not even security, but more like uh, what, what was the word I'm looking for? Well, like I said before, being aware that you're making someone else comfortable. Like for instance, if 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 you're on a date with someone and you're a guy and you feel like the girl is coming off like uncomfortable she's not being you know mm -hmm. she's standoffish you're trying to hug her yeah. she's moving and stuff like that and you keep forcing yourself onto her it's your responsibility to know like yo i'm being a creep right now mm -hmm. it's not really her responsibility and vice versa you know yeah because you're responsible yeah. to block and delete Right, so that's right. Over. Block and delete. That's true. Okay. That's true. Oh, yeah. No woman well, at prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I hear this topic, and you're right. As a man, you should know when you are coming and off women, too strong. And women, not even just men. I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting there. Okay. People, you know, when they're coming off too strong. However. On the subject of women, as a woman and having relationships with women, both, you know, platonic and relationship-wise, emotionally, I've realized that a lot of women, like a very huge majority of women have a problem saying no or letting people know that they're uncomfortable because of this idea that we're supposed to be so accepting and comforting and inviting and warm and demure almost. And it's, it's stupid <laughs> and it's backwards. But at the same time, it's like, I know a lot of women that have been in situations and you guys have probably been in these situations too, you never know, where you're messing with a girl or whatever and she's giggling, giggling, but she's moving away at the same time. So it's like, yeah. is she really comfortable or, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I feel like you can tell that giggle though. You can tell that awkward giggle from a girl that's giggling towards you. Mm -hmm. From the girl that's giggling and trying to pull away from you. But like, then, come on, mm -hmm. dude. But then there's also the whole, you know, maybe she's playing hard to get. Nah, dude, come on, man. It's time for us <laughs> but, to grow up. This ain't high school. This ain't elementary. Yo, it's it's ain't middle school. Do. Like, mm -hmm. it's time for us to grow up, man, as men. And I'm talking to our men right now. Like, mm -hmm. it's, stop acting like boys. If we're going to uh, claim the title men, we got to stop acting like boys for real. Like, you can tell when a girl is into you. You know what I mean? Come on, son. From not. Yeah, Some men yeah. feel like they're entitled to the vagina, though. That's true. Because let's say you take a girl out on... Shit, you don't have to take a girl out to the date. You met a girl in a bar. You've been buying her drinks all night. Now you feel entitled to get her number or go home with her that's or get... Not, oh, man, that's the sucker niggas. You know, what I'm saying? Saying? you know what I'm saying? I don't know what type of guys <laughs> your females are talking to over here. Okay, because... My past relationship was very open, you know, my girl loved girls and all that. You know what I'm saying? She loved to go, like, uh, snatch the chicks and all that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'd be like, yo, babe, you're too aggressive towards the people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to take it easy sometimes. So it's, it happens both ways. But some men, 
they be tripping not because you take a woman out yeah and you pay the phone bill this month and <laughs> she gotta give you nothing you feel me you just looking out no if you know what i'm saying you should know when it's gonna pop or not mm-hmm. yeah. oh so you just be paying phone bills just because that never happened before <laughs> i'm just talking about yo that's how things go in real life yeah, that's true though every that's female true. i deal with because i'm 33 years old every female i deal with is grown or they got a bill you feel me so mm-hmm. at the end of the day I'm sorry to say, but I don't want to say it on your <laughs> Say it. <laughs> say it. You know what I'm saying? You know, if we're fucking and plucking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> $60 to pay your phone bill and shit. But guess what, though? If you just want to sit down every month and say pay your bill, and guess what? You're not doing nothing with the fucking internet service you have on your phone and get a job or post anything, you're done. Mm. Block and delete. <laughs> but, Block and delete. <laughs> that's the theme for the show. Block and delete. <laughs> for real. But... So I don't mind helping you know, and I respect that, but I mean, and that also sp- spans the other conversation of, you know, these independent women and chivalry and all that other foolishness that comes with, quote unquote, because like, in reality, it is a real life fear. Like, especially if you have been victimized or if you ha- if you, you know someone who has been, like, especially like ugh, the perversion of it happening within family. Like, that's another thing, but that's completely different. Yeah, but, but it happens a lot, and it's an issue that needs to be addressed, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's not a comfortable issue, but things happen. Yeah, you know? that's why, you know, everyone at the Grammys is wearing white roses because <laughs> it's happening way too much. Like, I don't know if any, either of you have looked at the hashtag for me too. It is extensive. Like, and I saw a couple of people feeling away because some men were chiming in on it about their stories. And I'm like... It's not gender bias. Like, if you've been sexually harassed, like, sexual harassment is sexual harassment. Like, sexual abuse, it's, that's it's what sexual I, okay, abuse. That's what, I'm, that's what I was saying earlier. Is it yeah. a gender thing or it's just like, look, man, you're making somebody uncomfortable. Stop. Male mm-hmm. or female. Mm-hmm. I had my crotch done grabbed before <laughs> by women. I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? Like, period. And, and I never, a woman never asked to kiss me before. They just do it. Really? So, I mean, shit. <laughs> it was that sexual assault <laughs> somewhere down the line. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you, you know what I'm saying? It's different when it comes to that. You're male. And then now... No, it's, no, no, it's, no, no, oh, no, yeah. no. Mm, exactly. No, see, no, see, I'm talking about... No, he just put no. my point. You consent see? is consent. You, 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 okay. you didn't want to say you it. See? No, no, that's not true. That's not okay. I mean... I but, remember... but women, women, some women feel entitled yes, the same way you yes, say they men. Do. Feel entitled. Some women feel entitled mm-hmm. too. For instance, well, you know what? It happens to me a lot, man. Chicks just be mean <laughs> me and just feel like they could handle me. Oh, yeah. Huh, dang. Did you think you hurt about yourself, huh? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? You look like you want to rape or eat me alive. You know what? I feel like, I feel like, I feel harassed right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sad part is if you say that to a woman, oh, you're gay. What is, uh-huh. you don't want pussy? Like, what do you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's that stigma also. I remember, um, I think Chris Brown, it was, did an interview and they were talking about how he lost his virginity at a really young age or whatever to like a lady that was 25 or something. And the person interviewing him was like, you she got raped. raped. That was statutory rape. You got raped. You're not old enough or mature enough to understand what was happening. You know, oh yeah, it's pussy, whatever. You know, society tells you, pussy, that it, go get it. But at that age, for someone that old to take adv- take advantage of you is the actual word. Like, that's harassment. That's rape. That's yeah, it, 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 it is, is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you look at it. Exactly. It so it's there's a mind at the moment. Mm-hmm. And you know, you hear all these stories about how, like, in some cultures, some people, their fathers, when they get of certain age, I think it was Boosie said something about how he gonna buy his son uh, a prostitute or something like that for his 16th birthday. Boosie was high. And yeah. <laughs> but, I, I remember that. But it happens in real life though. So like some men really do when their son get of certain age, they're like, hey, we about to go get you a bitch. You losing your virginity today. Like, happy birthday type shit. And as a child, you don't want to disappoint your father. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to, or even if it's not that, maybe it's, you know, auntie you know play auntie from down the street that used to watch you on the weekends come over and watch yeah, you and next thing you know that's something that we need to um get the situation there within the united states mainly because you can't even say that though because things like that happen in jamaica too oh yeah <laughs> like it happens everywhere you know, it's not right just it a lot. yeah it's not just in one you know secluded area but we always talk about, you know, women and all this stuff. And a lot of people are saying that the Me Too movement, quote unquote, should be for women and men are trying to steal the shine. And it's like, 
how are you stealing shine from <laughs> something what, what, What's the Me Too movement? It's about people that have been sexually harassed. So okay. it's basically sharing your story and say, me too. Like, I've been assaulted okay. as well. Okay. So, yeah. That's why, you know, I was saying everybody. The hashtags. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's piled because of the whole, what was his name? The guy in the movie thingy? What was his um, name? Uh, I don't know why I got Donald Sterling in my head. No. It's not him. Uh, damn, I can't remember. Anyways, they, it's probably good that I can't remember his name. But, you know, they... Ever since that story broke, the amount of stories that have come out afterwards, and it's just like, okay, I hate to say this, but I know some of these are fictional. Like, there's... But how do you determine what is fictional? Exactly, exactly. That's the thing. They, these stories are extensive, and there's the argument of, why did you wait so long? And, you know, and I feel like that's not fair to the people who are victims to question that, because... You don't know what kind of trauma they had to deal with. You don't know how long it took them to actually accept that this happened to them, if they've even accepted this. And also the idea of the people that are assaulting them. A lot of these people are people in a position of power who can actually, you know, affect their future, affect their careers. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, but my honest opinion, I don't think those are the people that is, I don't think the ones that's taken long to come out. Mm Mm-hmm is the ones that we should second guess. Mm-hmm. We should second guess uh, the uh, a person like... From the, last the, year? No, the <laughs> director... Right, the director the director that came out and said Russell Simmons raped her, right? Mm-hmm. That it happened two years ago, right? But she's filing a civil suit and not a criminal yes. suit. Yes, Right, so she's filing money. for money mm-hmm. instead of... Reparations locked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So those are the ones you should question. Like those, and those are the ones that's making this whole shit look crazy. Those yeah. are the ones that got the Me Too movements and the whatever other movements looking crazy yeah. because why not? The, the the statute of limitations is not up. Mm-hmm. No, that was crazy. <laughs> statute of limitations is not up. So why not just go for the criminal? But you want that money exactly. And that's what a lot of it is about. And then first, she said he raped her one time, mm-hmm. and she they they were still friends after that, and <laughs> and he raped her a second time, uh-huh. and she was still friends with him after that. Oh, really? And then he called her one day and said, "Oh, it's time for us to start pushing your movie and something, something." And then after that, the sex allegations start coming out about the sexual assault, and yeah. then. He told her, this is what she said. He told her directly he didn't do it. So that's when she felt like she had to come out. Uh, allegedly, she had to come out and say her story. So this man raped you twice and you were still friends with him. You were still cool with him. And then, like, it, it's just. Yeah, but, but you know, when you're dealing with educated and people with common sense, you could see, um, like a detective, what's really going on. You know, Russell peeped the game as an OG. She's a little gold digger. You got to throw a little story. You feel me? She catch on to it. He smash. You feel me? When you look, she probably threatened him to leave his wife and his family. Like, and I ain't leaving my girl. And then shit went left. Because once you don't leave wifey, shit go left. Okay, wifey ain't going nowhere, baby. <laughs> just, just chill. Speaking of that, Kimora actually came to his defense on um, one of these allegations saying that, you know, basically she's known him for 20 odd years and this isn't the person she knows and all these other things. And what was it? Nelly's girlfriend also came to um, yeah. say something about him. Like, I guess one of the dates he was on tour and she was on tour with him and on the tour bus. So I'm like, I mean... When you're in love, you say anything to protect the person you're with, but at the same time, you never know. So I'm not here to say, oh, they're lying or whatever, but I just know some of these stories are really fishy. Like, Yeah, you're not picking sides. Yeah, not at all. Um, someone said that Genuine should um, use the hashtag me too after that trend. So <laughs> you tried to kiss <laughs> You heard you about the genuine what? story? No. Tell them about the genuine story. Oh my story. gosh! Oh, so, so, you gotta fill in your. Who in the? Okay. What? 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 In them jeans? No, genuine? Oh, yes. Oh. yes, that genuine. Oh lord! You, you got yes. the good mic, so you ain't got to talk that. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, you got the. Good <laughs> Apparently, yeah. but um, so he was was he on the set of um Big Brother UK or something like something that? Something like that. Something yeah, like he was that. on BBC yeah. or something talking about it. I don't know. And there's a trans woman on there, and. She was asking him basically like, um, would you date me because, you know, I'm a trans woman? And he was like, no, I'm fine. And he was, she was like, she just kept saying, but I'm a woman. 
which is true, you know, but he's like, yeah, but you know, that's not me. Like that's, that's not his preference. And he like kept, he was respectfully declining and he was saying, you know, no, thank you. And I'm she's okay. like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's like, I'm a woman. Forget about any of the trans stuff or anything in front of it on that score. Would you date me? And he's like, not if you told me you were trans. And she's like, no, 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 I'm not telling you I'm trans. Like, I'm a woman. He's like, as a woman, yeah. So she then, like, grabbed his neck and went in for a kiss. And then he, like, backed away from her. You know, the whole fucking LGBTQ. <laughs> yeah, what happened? What Everybody happened? is, like, trying to drag him for this and say he's transphobic. And, you know, he... In... <laughs> but, it, no. It come, back to, it come back to the same thing you said earlier. He's getting sexual harassed on live TV. Exactly. That's what I said. Because I'm like, one, that's his preference. You know, if you tell someone, hey, I'm trans, they have the right to say yes or no. Just like I personally prefer to date Caribbean people. Mm -hmm. I, I've dated probably one but American wait, but, in all my but, life. But, What's yeah, that? This is gonna, Go ahead. This is going to open up so much shit. Go ahead. Because you see, because... Cause it's, I let one go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said, okay. So are you saying that if you're trans, you should tell the person that you're talking to that you're trans? If you're talking to a person, yes. Like if it's like a relationship type thing, yes. Oh if yes. It's just, my thing is though. My if I just meet you at the bar, mm -hmm. and 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 I I meet you. As a woman, mm -hmm. like you, you say, a trans woman mm -hmm. at the bar, mm -hmm. and I'm approaching you as a straight man. Mm -hmm. You, you don't think you should tell me that you're a How trans do I know woman? That you're a straight man. What do you mean? Oh no, you don't find out until after the first text. <laughs> <laughs> you know the bar date is okay. We could, they could have the drinks, but when you get that first text, you better say I'm Ty. Ty with what? <laughs> I'm trans. <laughs> it's okay. I enjoy the drinks. We cool though. You know what I'm saying? That and okay, that is so Jack, that is Jack a respectable response. Okay, All yeah. right, that was cool. Good night. Have a great night. Yeah, we enjoyed the drink, but we cool though. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> I <laughs> want to know on the spot. I, I'm that I type. Bro. I want to know. Of on the course. Spot. What are you gonna but, do? Okay. Hey, what are you doing? I'm a trend. I got a No, 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 no. no it can't no, happen like no, that. You gotta be respectful. No, what are we no. in the area? If, hold on. Hold on. On the subject of I have a dick, what if they have surgery and they don't have a dick? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, you know what? <laughs> You're retarded. <laughs> I'm asking you a real question right now. <laughs> There's no longer a penis. They have a hole. They have See, clitoris. Those are stimuli. the ones that I'm talking about. Cause, well, because look, wait, hold on, Nangles. Those, those, those are the ones. Yes. That that literally feel like, look, I'm a hundred percent woman. I went through the surgery and everything. Even if they don't go through the surgery, they're still women. But I'm just saying, like, they yeah, yeah, don't I know. know it's discrimination in the community. Cause the ones that did get the surgery feel like they're better than the ones that don't have the surgery. Says who? Be when Caitlyn was going around. No, 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 no. Parading. Caitlyn is a whole nother subject. <laughs> it, it got, you know, oh no. Oh, let me let me let me let me sorry, sorry to cut you. Go ahead. I gotta say this. For all the listeners right now, <laughs> there are two different types oh. of trannies. Don't use don't that use word. That, that's okay, not a sorry. good word. You of, see? Of, I'm well, learning as I go. Because, <laughs> you see, exactly. because the whole world knows that I'm not homophobe. I just drank coffee this morning for a lot of people that y'all would not understand. Okay? <laughs> so, end of the day, you got okay, the people got that, 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 are very, <laughs> that are very spiritual. So when you become a certain spiritual level, you have the yin and the yang, which is the female and the masculine side, which balances your spirituality. So mm -hmm. some people might look, come towards you as gay, but they're very spiritual people. Mm -hmm. Then you have the love and hip hop ch people. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So it's two different Shots levels. Shots fired. <laughs> yeah. So you got to be careful who you're dealing with. So not everyone is bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all about what's going on. I respect the I respect the the, the trans You should respect people. all of them. I respect the trans people that go all the way through. Hold I on. don't that, that, respect no, 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 no. real. No. No. If you Hold did on. No, no, shut up. If you, you got the ignorant. money. If you got the okay, money. Okay, thank you. If you got thank the money you. for the surgery. That is the only reason though. 99.99%. Yeah, fuck. Anyways, 99.99% <laughs> Of the people who don't have surgery, 
is because they don't have the money. Okay. Because... But I'm not talking but, about those. But that's what I'm saying, though. You can't say that you respect... Because literally, I don't think there's any person well, that, identif- say, that you, identifies as trans yes. that will purposely not go through the procedure with the financial ability to do it. Like... Maybe they're still, like, beating off. No. <laughs> because you still have the stimuli. When they get the surgery, everything still works. It's just in a different form. It's the same thing. You still get stimulated. You still get all the same things because they're out there. They're taking the hormone pills. They're doing the shots. They're doing everything else. And they're developing breasts and shape and their faces are getting softer and everything else. They're going through the whole process. Surgery is (laughs) expensive. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think anyone is out here literally just playing dress up and saying, hey, I'm trans. Like, no. Like, it's literally something that, like, this is it. One of my friends, she have... Trendy homeboys. Stop Sorry, using that word. Right, she got, she got, what are you, what are you supposed to say? <laughs> it's tell supposed me to be old school. Okay, let me tell you right? what happened, right? And that was the okay. word. Y'all we ain't have, we, we have friends, we have friends that's... Transgender. That's, cool. that's transgender. transgender. So, that's but the it, 2018 yeah. word. But they would be like, okay, we know your boyfriend is from the islands and he's not into certain things. So they know that when they come to my spot, he got a sign said, no twerking if you're a man. That means not in front of me. And when you're my girl chin, you already could twerk all you want. As soon as I step through the door, all man stop twerk. <laughs> See, but that's a respect we have. You understand me? And she would go I'm out. with that, though. She would, she would go out to Wilton Manors and chill with them at the bars and vibe. And I'm cool with that. That's what I'm trying to say. We are not homophobe. It's just that that's just the way it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what? I just that, that, to say, baby. That, that no twerking thing, just, that was interesting. Straight up. The hell? Now, that's just island man. It's like it's a form of respect because if I'm not into certain things, like you said, like if I'm genuine, and you said, "Would you like me to twerk for you?" and I said, "No, I want her to twerk." Who for says you. he's twerking for you? No, I'm saying not choking and no, 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 why you twerk, Don't twerk in front of me. But me, let's give you a thing. Like don't, look. don't like, me don't like to see. Oh, don't look. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love it. He said, "Don't look." Don't look. Like your eye. You know what I see? Don't look. Turn your head. How long it's going to take? Don't talk. If it's... Listen. No, 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 no. One. You know. If it's my house... That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. If it's my house, you're going to follow my rules. Oh, really? So you have a sign twerk, on the door. If you want to twerk, you twerk outside of there. Wherever else you want, that's fine. Once it's in my home, you follow my yeah, rules. Yeah, when you're my girlfriend chilling, and, and you, which is your wow. home door. When, when you chill with your tranny friend, with your, with your, oh with your, God. with your transgender friend, <laughs> y'all could do whatever you want. I don't care. But when I step into the building, have some respect. If y'all at a party and y'all dancing, do what y'all that's do. All, that's all. You know what I'm saying? If y'all at a party, do what y'all do. This is so interesting. Why? Yeah. Because oh, because you know it's what? so ignorant. And you know what the trend? How? The, the, the trend. My 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 my. People's trying dinner friends be saying, uh-huh. dang, because you're so cool. I can't believe you're actually smirking with me. I'm like, because I'm from the island, I'm supposed to be an asshole? No, I'm not. <laughs> I, th- I, I still think she thinks we're assholes, even though we're okay with because, it. Because, but... no, because I feel like you guys have your level of acceptance, and it's not complete acceptance. It's Which is true. It's situational. Like, it's circumstantial. So it's... Everything is circumstantial. Exactly. But at the same time, you're saying that you're not comfortable with it, so it's a respect thing. And that can go back to so many other things, whereas, you know, the whole comfort level with women. I'm not comfortable. That's what I'm saying. Oh, why, 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 why? Easy, the man. Calm down. Relax. (laughs) (laughs) But you're trying to make a point, but you're literally making our point. I'm not comfortable. Me too. Time's up. Don't look. Nobody's coming on to you. It's my home. I am. Oh, so I just in your feel, house. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, like, so, like, okay. Yeah, so, like okay. If, if one of my, my friends, transgender friends, walk into here right now, they could twerk and spin on the head if they like. This is not my house. Exactly. I, I have no say so. Yeah. Okay, and I'm not closing my eyes. But, let me just tell you, at my spot, it's different. Yeah. You know? that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, at my home. Yeah. Anywhere else, if you had a party, my if you had domain. a restaurant, wherever you were at, do what you do. <laughs> at a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> you could vogue at the fashion show and spin too. Yeah. But, yeah, it's okay. What's wrong with voguing? But nothing ain't wrong with voguing. <laughs> I'm just saying. In my Catch home, it. no. <laughs> of course I do. That's all. Y'all are Boy, I'm telling you, for the past six months, I was like, welcome to Broward. <laughs> yeah. It's a different life. And you have to be able to get along with everyone. And it's all one love. There's no yeah. time for war, you know? 
I just th- I I understand where to go back to the question I asked about you know should should a transgender person tell you you know I, I'm a transgender when you meet them you know if to, if it's where no loud music is there and it's like a dinner type of I'm so wrong then they should right. you know what I'm saying whispered over like yo this is what's going on offer it yeah but I mean I don't want to put them in a in a in a place where. Uh, you could. I don't want to put them in a. In a, I don't want to. I don't want them to feel like you have to walk around with a big T on your freaking uh head or something. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to walk around with a symbol on your head. But if I'm approaching you as as a woman, like you're in the shape of a woman, you're in the look of a woman. woman. They are a woman. I'm a, so I, so you know that I'm approaching you as a straight man. But how okay, do, I'm, I'm gonna on. say it in a good way. Hold, Hold on. on. I'm thinking of a good way to say something. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> How do we know that you're not a uh, FTM? But why are you assuming? Why are you assuming? I'm assuming because that's what yeah. I that's my norm. Why are you, you assuming? Know that's my norm. That's what I'm saying. You know my norm. We don't know anything. Know your norm? What's that? These are, these are complete strangers. You're meeting at random places spontaneously. My thing is, if you go out to a party mm-hmm. and it's going to be just a sex thing, Whatever, but what you mean? Whatever. Wait. What? What do you mean? Whatever. Like, if you feel like you want to disclose it, that's your business. But I don't feel like you should be entitled to say, "Hey, I just met you. I'm trans." Like, get the fuck. Okay. Because so if you know you're so gonna have sex with this person, there's so you many tell them? other things that people don't tell people that they need to tell people before they have sex with them that they don't. So okay. being trans and being clean of any STDs or any STIs is one thing. Like, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm that's, keep it real. But, keep it real. Don't tell me. You're um, transgender while I'm on the patron. Text me later. <laughs> <laughs> but look, but look, but look, but look. What I'm saying. What Why I'm saying, is that, Dangles? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm you back, you backsiding <laughs> out of that one. <laughs> I want to know what why I'm saying. Not. Is if you, if you know, if you know as a transgender person that you're gonna have sex, you're in your mind, you want to have sex with this person, right? You don't think you should tell that person, even if it's a one night stand. Why? Because that they're not looking to have sex with a transgender person. They're how do you know that? To have sex with a natural born. Oh, you mean how woman. you know that he's a man? It's not like you're being prejudiced. No, no, he's not. Okay, you a know natural what? born woman is born with natural big breasts, a vagina. No. I feel like no. I'm limited yes. to what I say no. right yes. now because I'm so natural careful of what breasts? I say. I'm so careful of what I say right now. Natural because big breasts. Whatever we say, she vagina. Not. Don't forget the vagina. <laughs> That's the only thing, really. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I get that transgender people have because, hormones. Because I mean, there are so some of the there are so many whatnot. women out here that are born with literally just a vagina and they I, look like a little boy. I don't want to have. But but I'm saying I don't want to have sex. I'm point blank, and then I'm off of it. <laughs> I don't want to have sex <laughs> with a, a a person that was born with a penis and then transform their penis to a <laughs> vagina. Period. Okay. But I have no hate. In my heart towards you, exactly. But I know my sexual preach, preference bro, and what I like. Preach, okay, period. so I have a question then. You l- you know your sexual preference. If you're sexually attracted to someone based on what they look like, you see them naked and I'm everything. I'm sexually attracted to natural Hold vagina. On. You see them. <laughs> you see them naked and everything looks all intact, like a natural woman born with a vagina. You can't duplicate a vagina. How you know? Well, well, well you actually, you can. Oh, no. A natural. Okay, I have a born. question. I have a question. Uh huh. Have you box. seen? Have you seen a post op? Uh, hey, have you seen a post op? Um, um, vagina after they've gotten the surgery. Yes. You saw it. Yes. Like after the surgery's healed and everything. Yes. It doesn't look like a real vagina. No. <laughs> no, my face has been in many vaginas. Oh my! So I think if they have sex box, they could invent their vagina. Yeah, I feel like anything is possible, because. Huh? <laughs> Technology is great. I mean, they have yeah, like you said, the sex bots. You know, <laughs> can okay, can a transgender woman squirt? Not all women can squirt. Mm. Mm. What is the option for some women? Mm. Mm. I like the way you moonwalk okay. out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got, I got, I gotta clarify something before I um, step up for one minute. Mm-hmm. To all the Transgender people listening out there. 
I am one of the only reggae dance artists that perform in your club right now. <laughs> Deep, okay. Okay, really? Because you know why? Because I'm not homophobic, but you have to respect the fact that I'm not into that. So okay. I'm, I'm going to come on. with two females. I got to cut you off right there. Huh? Why is it that straight men always think that gay men want them? We don't, they don't want y'all. They don't want y'all. I don't want not y'all all, either. Okay. But, <laughs> okay. But funny, my dog. thing is, I, I shouldn't even say gay of straight men because straight people in general, the minute you tell someone that you're gay, oh my God, you might want, bitch, I don't yeah, that's want corny, you. That's corny. Because literally, I think I spoke about this on one of the previous episodes. When I came out of high school, a lot of people were like, oh, she's gay. <laughs> bitch, I don't want you. Like, I probably fucked your best friend already. Get the fuck out of here. Like, nobody wants you. Like, I'm telling exactly, you, this is me. That's just the mentality of certain people. But Like you? What I'm saying with the transgender community is this. I'm a very spiritual being. So I look at it like this. If you are, uh, if you are born, that's why I'm saying this before I step up for one minute. If you are born a vessel for a female soul, and yeah, basically the body is a vessel. So just look at it like that. You're born as a Porsche. <laughs> so to have a male driver, but you end up getting a bad female as your driver. <laughs> no one can see her, but she's pushing the Porsche. So the body is a vessel. So therefore, I understand these things. That's why we are all cool. But I like real vagina. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank That's you, all. Thank we are all cool. That's it. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great one. That's a great. That's it. Drops the bike. I don't want you to hate me. Drop the bike. And that's a, that, that was. I can't a great, even argue with that. That was a great example he gave you. I can't there. argue with that. That was a great example. I, I love that. That was all. That was all. That's all we saying. We like just the natural born vagina. That's it. Nothing more. Okay. Nothing less. Think about this, though, right? <laughs> what is there to think about? No, listen. Can I finish I know, I know, saying? I know, I know. Just, just. Okay, so earlier he said something like, you know, tell me ahead of time or whatever. Don't tell me when I'm on Patron. Yeah. Right? No, no, he said text me later. Yes, exactly. Don't tell me when I'm on Patron. Text yeah. me later. That sparks so many, like, concerns because yes. that is one of the main reasons why they don't tell people because... Like you said, you meet somebody at a club, you're out, you're drinking, they approach you. First of all, if you deny a man as a natural-born woman in the club, God knows what can happen, first of all. So imagine you deny a man in the club after he done had two or three shots of Hennessy, and you say, hey, I'm transgender. You might dead. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> But you're saying Boy, this came and turn up this episode, man. Whatever. It's your best episode ever. Don't lie to yourself. This is your best one. Don't lie to yourself. So that's my thing. Like, there's that fear also because it's not always the, you know, I'm being deceptive. I'm trying to mislead you. Because I mean, in general, they are women, but they are doing this as a means of representing themselves for what they feel that they are, who they feel they are. <clears throat> so you go out, you tell a guy, hey, you know, I'm, I was born with a penis. And all kind of harm can be thrown in your direction as a result of just, quote unquote, being honest, as you say. Now, like we said earlier about, you know, having this conversation in broad daylight, you meet somebody in a mall, you go out shopping, there's no, you know, alcohol or anything influencing and might be able to have a civilized conversation with someone. Um, of course, you know, you sit down, you meet someone, oh my God, hey, you want to exchange numbers or whatever? Okay, listen, I'm let you know, whatever, whatever. You can either do it there or you might even say it's deceptive if you get the number and then do it. But there's really no right time to tell someone that. Like, I think because, that, but you're not the same as everybody else. So you're a rather calm human being. <laughs> you're not, you're quite level headed. Some people are just plain ignorant. So I think, I think in that position, in, in in that scenario, because it goes back to all seriousness. It goes back to the point I was trying to make where I was like, it's all about you being aware that you're making someone else uncomfortable or, you know, because right now it's still, uh, it's still very rare. It's not the norm. Transgender, even being gay. people, though. Be, even being gay. Right, right. Hold on. Even being gay is not necessarily the norm. So I feel like we should we should try to understand each other better. We should try to educate each other instead of pointing the fingers all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because a lot of these words 
that uh, we don't know that we are being offensive mm-hmm. with, you know? Um, so I feel like we should, uh, y'all should try to educate us a little bit more and we should try to receive it a little bit better. Um, you know what I mean? Period. Okay. And, 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 and last, lastly, I think in when, 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 as a transgender person, right? When you meet someone in the club, I don't think that's a good time for you to take them home with you because you're in the club, they're under the alcohol, this, that, and the third. You never know who that person is. I think you should wait till the next day, text them, hey, look, look, this is what I, this, this is what I have going on. That goes for every woman in the world, if that's the case. Yeah, but because right now, no, 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 no. You can't, you can't pick and choose because if you say that, then you can basically say that as a woman, you can't, you shouldn't go home with a man that night because you need to text him the next morning and say, "Hey, I want to have sex with you." Like, no, you can't, not even just the sex. That's though. okay. Then you're saying to leave the club with someone or to whatever. I saw a tweet earlier where someone said something like, "You know, I'm that friend that if." I don't care if you just met a guy and you're kissing all over him, but he's coming back to ours. You're not going to him. You're going to end up chopped up in a bush somewhere. That, it can, that's real. Get, get but that's what, I'm saying. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. As a woman, you never know. People out here are fucking crazy. So it's not even necessarily about being trans. You can't just stereotype that and just say, hey, as a trans person, you can't no, have a one... I'm not you're saying trans people can't have a one-night stand. That's basically what you're saying. I'm saying right now in this climate... Let's take it one step at Trans a time. Trans people been having one night stands since before the seventies, right? But that, but that's with dude that a lot of these dudes that's in the closet that is not just out there like that. You feel me? And they still not just out there like that. That's why a person like Mister C got caught up <laughs> and and uh, uh young not young Jock but <laughs> Bobby Valentino got yeah. caught up the other day. That's why because they still in the closet. It's not the the climate right now. You got to move, just like black men, just like black men in society right now, we got to move a certain way and know. You get pulled over by a cop? Yeah, you know, well, hold on. Let, make sure you have your wallet out ready at the window. But yeah, because in the closet, <laughs> it's, it's like the wallet of Jamaica had this window that yam put on it, but Ooh. die. Ooh. Right, Ooh. right. Ooh. Right, that's what I'm saying. Say, yeah. I say, yeah, you know what, that's what me fucking get on yam out, you Ooh. know. But you know your lie, because she tell me, say, you bring her into it. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> But, but I'm just saying the, the climate right now. I just feel like we should move a little bit, a, a little bit different because, you know, it's that's uh, not fair. It's not life is not fair. As black people, it's not fair. What okay, we go through. exactly. That's my point. But my thing is, you're talking about like transgender people. They have no choice over this. Just like black people who have no choice over the color of their skin. You're saying you. It's funny because I was just about to say when you were talking about you know teaching them and educating. You sound like white people saying how. We should teach them to be sensitive to certain topics as black people. Teach them to understand certain things about black people. I don't really hear that people. from white people. I, white uh-huh. people act like they know everything. No, white people, the people who feel like they're allies and they're pro-black and, you know, black lives matters, you know, supporters and, you know, they're not crack-ass crackers. Those mm. people, they're crack always <laughs> they're always saying, you know, well, you guys could teach us, you know, how to use the proper terminology and, you know, do they want to be called blacks or coloreds or, you know, like... and. It's a conversation. It really is. But like you were saying earlier, it's something that's not known, but it's based on the circle that you're in. Because if you're in a predominantly straight, youthful, they had whatever over circle... 400 years to get that right. Uh, this now, the the the, the whole... Uh, the climate right now is so new. Uh, it's really not, though. Gay marriage, yeah. Think about it. Gay marriage just got legal in the United yeah, States. Yeah, but that's that what doesn't... I'm hold that's on. So that new. doesn't make it new, though. That doesn't make it new. Like I said, it's been going on for decades. Gay culture been going on. Yes. Transgender, all of that stuff been going on. Right. But I'm saying the making it the norm. Making it the norm. You see, now people accept gay marriage. They accept it more. Yes. No, uh, come on. A lot more people accept. Mm -hmm. Gay marriage. You don't think they don't? They I think don't it's fifty fifty with the same thing as being black. Though. Nah, I think we it's do. more. I think it's just way... about just about being black because it's the same thing. Some people still don't think black people should be able to vote. Of course, I mean, but a lot of people, think... or at least own land or not be freed. Right. Of <laughs> so I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, you can't really like. When you're a part of a marginalized group, you really can't put the same stigmas 
against another marginalized group that, that has been placed on you by other oppressive people. Like, that's ridiculous. That's backwards to me. Like, I don't think, I, I think in order for it to be normal it, or, or be, be the norm now. It is normal, though. No, in order for it in this society, in that society it is, but in this society of, you know what I mean? White like, people the, the, having power? And not just white people. Come on, black people too. I don't know. It depends on what word it because too. I think it's worse in the black community. I know. I hope my ex ain't listening to this radio because she's like, he's talking a lot about me, girl. I know (laughs) it's me he's talking about. (laughs) Like, we go down Broward, got a lot of things going on, man. Parties with the Georges and all that. And a lot of the, you know what I'm saying? So it's normal. It's just that a lot of people just don't know. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But, I mean, that's what, going back to what I said earlier, it's based on the circles that you involve yourself with because if you didn't date someone that was part of the LGBT group, you probably never knew Wilton Manners ex- existed. You probably drove through one and said, oh, this is pretty neat and nice. What's this? Mm-hmm. It's a whole bunch of gay people that live right in that little community and it's neat and it's pretty and at nighttime, they turn it the fuck out. Like... Yeah, and they're it very is what respectable. It is. Exactly, and they're I polite. Listen, and listen, because it is nice. It's a very nice community. People are polite. They speak to you, like you know. But the same thing, like if I think it's funny, someone actually asked me about Wilton Manor. Some, one of my friends from out of town was like, "Oh, do you know a neighborhood called?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't know if you want to go stay there because I think it was doing like Airbnb or something like that." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, it's no." A, it's a good place to leave. Like you go home and then you you go mm-hmm. you leave. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So yeah, you but you get caught walking around and say you're straight. <laughs> <laughs> but you can though. You can yeah, because you, can, you know, you gotta be very open minded because Yes. That's but I feel like is. I feel like that should be the norm anyways. But I mean people It's normal for me, it's normal for yeah. Jay Brizian, it's normal for you. <laughs> but a lot of people ignorant. are very ignorant mm-hmm. to accept certain things. Mm-hmm. So, That's what I'm trying to say. So even though we accept it, mm-hmm. they're still going to fight us. It right? has nothing to do with accepting it. This is our, these people's life. This is who they are. So I it's was like, forced to accept it, man. Yeah, yeah. I, yo, you want to hear something? I shouldn't have never to do that. <laughs> when I first came to the United States, mm-hmm. I was a, what do you call it? A homophobe? A homophobe. Listen to all homophobic. them. Homophobic, man. It's the all them Rasta music and say, you know what? Batty boy need to be dead. <laughs> and soon as we touch a Miami, we say, you know what? I think I'm wrong. They're, <laughs> they're actually nice people. I was ignorant, stupid, and young. I didn't know better. Right. So right. you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people just don't know better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they, yeah. I mean, what? A lot of people don't want to know better, too, though. Yeah. You're right. A lot. Uh, you know they, a lot of yeah. people don't want to know, but yeah, they're very yeah. ignorant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they're very. Yeah. And I can always go back and forth and relate this to, you know, racism in, you know, black and white because it's, in my opinion, it's the same exact thing because, I mean, we touched on this a couple episodes ago about, you know, the whole gay agenda and trying to normalize being gay in the eyes of society. Whereas, you know, it wasn't that long ago when I first moved to America, you ain't seen niggas on TV like that. It was token one black person on TV and that was just to say, now. yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Way. Like, it's come a long way. So it's kind of like, I hate when black people say the same things that, you know, it was that white people were saying not too long ago about us. Because, I mean, <laughs> it's the same shit, basically. Same it's just like something what? like, you know, you're trying to push too much black people on TV. Like, that's not quote unquote normal or having the same rights or you know anything like that because so basically if you're about um in the episodes now people complaining too much um too much black people it's blackwashed you know what I'm saying yeah and you know the same thing about you know enforcing black culture and but, all this but, foolishness okay but you see that's the thing even with the uh, uh not just the black people being on TV but it's still not. I still feel a way when I see two men kiss. Not like a negative way, but if I'm Does watching it make TV... You tingle? Empire. But, but, but when I'm watching TV and it just happens... I love Empire for that. I still be like, oh, okay, I wasn't ready for that. I'll be like, okay, all right. And guess what? But there's I a white stop person. watching it. There's a white person out there saying, oh, shit, there's a nigger. I, I wasn't expecting that. Hey, that's, hey, that's them. But I'm, I'm not saying I'm judging them. Ow. But Sensei, oh. you know, Sensei is my Bruh. shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I know. We, we all here... We ain't, you know, we okay. We ain't bad looking people. <laughs> and you hear them by gay people all the time, you know. Of course. I went to a party. Take it as a compliment yes. and move on. I went to a party. I get hit my... on by ugly niggas all the time. Yeah. I went to a party <laughs> at, my, at my my godmother house. Mm-hmm. She's from Cuba. She's mm-hmm. Santo. She's into mm-hmm. the African religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, my godfather from Miami, he's gay. 
Mm-hmm. He's a very powerful man in this. Believe me, this man could make work miracles, make water turn to wine, okay? <laughs> so the gods are not picky. But long story short, when I came to the party, me and my Jamaican godfather were the only two straight men in there, okay? <laughs> and all the Cubans that was gay was like, you want some water? Do you want to see it? Do you want me to rub your back? I'm like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> but we are all family. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, yeah. so... Oh, so you got a taste of what women feel like on a regular basis. I uh, that's what you all feel like? Yes. It's yeah, annoying, right. it's uncomfortable, and it's... it's not just what? women. It's uninviting. I'm not going to limit it to just y'all. Like but that, I'm just that. saying that. That's what women it, feel. But I that's know, the thing about it, though. Like, like, I ain't going to lie, you're right. You're right. The only bad bitch in the party, and every <laughs> nigga is here. Exactly. That's, that's like... You know what? Why y'all think I don't dress up? <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> my homegirl yeah, like, don't wear skirts no more. She's like, she's, she, I, I don't know. I think, well, what happens? You become uncomfortable? Like, people keep watching you? This is my thing. Okay, keep I, the horn? <laughs> yeah, all of that. Yeah. All of that. When I walk, literally, I hate saying this, like, I walk down the street, literally, from, like, my apartment to the corner store. If three cars drive by, two of them are honking. And literally, I'm in basketball shorts, some slippers, and freaking a t-shirt. And I'm like, are y'all just disgusting or y'all really think I look that good? Because it's just, it's uncomfortable. Yes. And my thing is like, I, you can ask anybody. I go out and I am comfortable. Like I am the epitome of comfort. Because don't get me wrong, I have clothes in my closet that would make your jaw drop. But at the same time, I'm not wearing that. Yeah, I'm but not. You gotta, but don't worry, you're gonna wait in due time when you become like Rick Ross and you embrace the haters. <laughs> it's, not even good. About, it's not even about you know, hate though. Because you, like, I honestly like, for the longest while, I I have a discomfort around being around men. Me personally, I do. Like, I know there's some guys that I've known for years they that... They think they watch you constantly. But it's not even just that. I will not be in a room with this person. Like, multiple guys that I know that I speak to on occasion that I will not... If Say, hey, come on. No, I'm not going nowhere with you because I hate to say that I assume you want sex, but at the same time, I don't want to be naive and be like, oh, no, we're just friends and then end up in a bad situation. You get me? Yeah, because, yeah, because you know we the have, intention. Exactly, but... At the same time, even if nothing is said, nothing is indicated, you still have this thing in the back of your mind. Like, okay, are you really trying to be my friend? Like, these guys that pop up every so often and, you know, you post a picture on Instagram and it's like, hey, and it's like, nah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's Yeah, yeah. They, it's, they, they, they don't respect the, the levels. Exactly. You know so it's the same thing because, like like I'm saying, you, you adapt to certain things. And some people... <sighs> Okay. Some got- people still go yeah. out and they dress up and despite, you know, and you know, whatever. But I'm one of those people, I don't like confrontation. I don't like, I don't like negative energy. But, I don't like none of that shit. Yeah, so I just avoid true. it completely. <laughs> like I try my best. But I, I understand where you come from because um, I met this young lady from Dominican Republic, mm-hmm. you know, because um, in my line of business, I meet people from all around the world. <laughs> and... She was basically We're just going to call this episode Dangle Sells Himself. <laughs> <laughs> and she basically she basically felt like you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? She feel like, damn, everywhere I go, people blow the horn. Mm-hmm. She ain't got no peace. She's walking to the store. She mm-hmm. got to wear a big sweater across her booty because her ass is too That's- fat. Ask she anyone. to cause a damn blockage. I always so, have on a sweater or a cardigan or something covering my butt. Always. Yeah, but she carry herself that way. That but she booty? understands that now. You, go, really? you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, with age, you embrace it. Because you know what? Being beautiful. It's uncomfortable. Being beautiful is a, is a gift and a curse. It's both. Message. And you gotta embrace the mm-hmm. curse. Being beautiful is a gift and a curse. Because you don't wanna be ugly or ass. So, therefore, when you're born beautiful, you feel like, you know what, I wish I was ugly. Well, bitch, put that <laughs> ugly girl your face. You know what's because, funny? You know, a lot what? of ugly people have the most confidence in the world, and I applaud them. Go you. Yeah, because they want what you have. But you know what? They're going to have to bleach them skin and do oh surgery. Oh, my goodness. No, so no, day, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't endorse no, that. No, listen, 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 <laughs> it's a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. You got to embrace your body. Yeah. Oh no, trust me. I personally I'm in love with my body and myself. I like it's not even necessarily <laughs> It's not it's not even necessarily about me. It's just it's literally just annoying. And at the same time, like my mom is one of those people that like she watches the news like it is life. Like every news episode comes on, she's in front of the TV watching it. And she's one of those people like, oh, you know, you be careful, your people might kidnap you, and da da da. So it's like all these things, like, in my head, I'm like, okay, mom, relax. But at the same time, it's like, this is a real thing. Like, a so many people thing, go mom. missing, like, yeah, yeah, she ain't joking. off of nothing. And, like, where I live is ducked off. 
nobody knows I live like nobody knows there's apartments there. <laughs> so it's like I could be walking home one day and you know, bye bye Janae. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's not even like and it's not even necessarily oh because I look good, but people are crazy. And people people are, crazy. are crazy. And that's just the way it is. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But like I said, being I dress up no ladies no, don't get me wrong. And a curse. <laughs> but and also we're not here to be eye candy for men. But you know, I dress up here and there when I feel it's necessary, but yeah. at the oh, same yeah, time, look good for, oh, myself. Yeah. I mean, I wear Victoria's Secret every day, so I feel sexy underneath. Like, you don't have to see this. You have to look good for yourself. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I get home and I'm like, ooh. But when I go mm-hmm. out, I'm just like, mmm. <laughs> Let's embrace it, man, because you're royal. She's royal. Stop. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, I have one, one girl on my IG. Make go forward your little link. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you think she don't care if you pass and every day I care. Crash. Oh and you blow God. after her. She love the attention. How you rap? She have the Egyptian thing for her. She look real good though. Who? But is some, that the some some chick on my IG man? She's everywhere now because she got over a hundred thousand followers. I know now. we talk about. I she know. follow me. She was five thousand when I first went on the IG. You know? Yeah, she follow me. But so <laughs> people gotta embrace it because she said she went on to the restaurant the other day. She was gonna come on the show. She was gonna come on. Okay, the, show. the only black girl in the restaurant, and she look like an Egyptian. Remind mm-hmm. me. She really big headed. She really thinks say Nafatiti smack and took over her body. <laughs> yo, so, for real, yo, son. Yo, for real. She really, she really believes so. But she said, you know what? I'm gonna embrace it because guess what? I'm a representative of black women and I'm gonna look good all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's my story. So she she cursed too. I understand that, but yeah. I mean, you also have to understand people like different people, different comfort levels. Yeah, man. So no, it's no, man. you'll get there, man. I won't though. No, I'm not high fiving you. She said no. no, I wouldn't get there. I would never get there. If you think it's you're not, gonna have me look No, it's around. not it's not even a matter of getting somewhere. It's just like I said, I like to avoid conflict. I don't like attention. I mean, that's why I'm on a radio show. I'm not in front of a camera. <laughs> like yeah, I don't yes, like I, yeah. I don't like attention. Like I don't like people focusing on me too much. Like I'm I'm not here for that. If I'm trying to deliver a message, I need the message to be delivered and you don't need to worry about what I look like or, you know, all these this, like stupidity. Like you hot. You super hot fire. <laughs> it was funny, like I say that, and it just reminded me of like when I used to go to high school. My mom used to be upset because I used to go to school looking just regular degular, and she'd be like, "Oh, I'm like, mom, I'm going to school for an education. It's not a fashion show." Like, yeah, you was focused. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's just me though. Like, I'm just I just be comfortable. But when I dress up though, I be dropping jaws. It's okay. Yeah, and I, but my know. thing is, I like that reaction though when people are like, "Oh shit," because I'm like, "Yeah, you thought I was just a bummy ass bitch all day every day? Nah, relax." <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, mm-hmm. before we cut the first, um, one of my friends was like, "Oh, when I used to make money, man. I mean, when you used to make money." Let me hear this. When you used to make money, as for all these rich people, man, man, I wish I knew better back then. I would have come up, though. I what said, you mean? I said, what are you talking about? So you see that type of shit. <laughs> That's why when you're beautiful, you go to party with beautiful people. Nobody you know what's funny? You. When you have a Rolex on, you go to a party for a nigga that have a Rolex too because he ain't right, right. robbing you. People with money chill with people with money. Right. And beautiful people are sex with beautiful Message. people. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so... Yeah. I have Embrace so many curse. comments. <laughs> so many comments. Embrace the curse, people. You know what? <clears throat> I have some stories about, you know, when I was younger and opportunities, I should have taken it. <laughs> you know, I was younger and, you know, conscious and, you know, aware of things. Like, you know, hey, maybe I should have robbed that nigga for a couple of stacks. But, <laughs> you know, opportunities presented themselves. And I'm just like, yeah, no, yeah. I want to work three jobs and support the views myself. Are pointless and, <laughs> the views of Pointless and Dangles does not reflect JB and Sutherland and his representatives. Now, back to the show. <laughs> I'm just saying, because, you know, people, y'all talk about dressing up and, you know, looking flashy dashy yeah, all yeah, the time or whatever. The Listen, embracing the curse, you can milk a couple of niggas just off of embracing the curse. But, like, yeah, yeah. sidebar, that ass, when I was younger and embracing the curse, because yeah. I used to promote parties and, you know, I'd go to some of these parties that I do promote, whatever, and I'd dress up heels, dress, low cut, mini skirt, whatever. Like, I'd be out here. And, it would be like niggas like, yo, you like you need a Gucci watch. You look like you need like peeling off hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. And I'm sitting there like, nigga, I got three jobs. I don't need you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's like, just and that's always baffled me. Like just off of looks, you just want to give me money. But then 
like I said earlier, there's also that expectation after the fact where it's like, okay, well, bitch, I just gave you five grand. What do you mean? What do you... Nothing? Like... Nah, nigga, bye. Oh, no. and, and I'm the type of person, my mouth is reckless. So I can't take money from nobody that's going to expect nothing from me. Because I'm like, bitch, I work for mine. You wanted to give me this money. Like, I'm going to end up dead in the bushes somewhere. That's what my mother worries yeah, about yeah. me. <laughs> like, 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 but it's a different time. You know what I'm saying? Like, in 2018, you know, we've got a lot of lame dudes. But the guys, that's not how you impress a woman by putting <laughs> out stacks. You pull out a bank card. <laughs> Listen. An iPhone 10. No. You know, instead of putting her 10 racks on your pocket, then she called her cousin and say, hey, the, guy in the, the, red phones, shirt, man. Hey. the guy in the red shirt it's a lick. is um coming outside right now mm-hmm. and he got 10 grand on him. You guys be tripping. Mm-hmm. Take it down a notch, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny you said something about a bank card. I It bothers me so much when I see people sending money to MoneyGram in the United States. Oh, Lord. I, I got God. <laughs> oh, that's you? But <laughs> God, <bro. laughs> because my thing is like, you don't have a bank account? Like, they're free. How much money you owe the bank? What did you do? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm judging people. Let me stop. But <laughs> I was just joking. I was talking about the Cash App. <laughs> oh, no. Cash I App like is, cash cash app is fine. Cash but app. you need a bank account to get Cash yeah, App, yeah, though. I got, so I say I got God, you know. I got God, man. Yeah. I'm in the moment of weakness. <laughs> oh. Somebody said Cash App me. Uh... <laughs> it just Cash App me. I'm about to be homeless. Well, shit. I'm about to text you I, next I, week. I Give me like, a number. You know what, man? <laughs> Red coming up. Shit. I'm about to text hey, you. Hey, know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? Let me see this Cash App really work. Oh, oh it shit. It works, baby. <laughs> I pressed two, five, I pressed ten. My money was gone. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? If you did it this. <laughs> You're going to learn today. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get robbed. You sent that shit. <laughs> but it was just it was twenty five dollars. That's all you sent. Yeah, but for business wise, um, you know, like my business partner mm-hmm. I'm somewhere, and I need like certain things to mm-hmm. buy equipment and stuff. Yeah, it's, we use cash. App. It's perfect. It's amazing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, you guys have anything else I want to talk about? No. Nope. Okay, I'm running away. Um. Apparently, people like my little slogan from last week. So, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you for tuning in and good night. <laughs>